If Jesus asked us, like, are you willing to die for me? Wow. Like, for real. There's, there's Christians overseas that are literally dying for Christ, but we have a hard time even living for him. Wow. And so it's like, how can you, you die for him if you're not living for him? Yeah. Hey guys, it's Damien. And I'm Kennedy. And thank you so much for joining us. Now we are continuing our Bible study in John 21. It's just been a good time. This is the fourth installment. So if you haven't watched the other ones, we're going to have cards. And even at the mm -hmm. end of the video, we're going to be placing all the videos that we did on John 21. Right now in the story, Jesus is on the beach. He's cooking good breakfast for all the disciples. It's been a miracle. Fish, 153 fish have been gathered by the disciples. And Jesus has this special moment with Peter. And we're going to catch up. Yeah, so John 21, verse 15. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I just love the scriptures. I hope you guys love the scriptures. I hope you are following along with us. But here, I think one of the main things or the first things I see is Jesus calls Simon or Peter by his government name. Mm. <laughs> like he in trouble. He yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, government name. If your daddy call you like Damien, Karee, Harris, Nash, bro, I know I'm in trouble. <laughs> like if he give me my whole name, I say that with our son now. Yeah. Like the whole name. And so Jesus calls him by his whole name and it shows that yeah, he's in trouble kind of thing. That there's a distance between their relationship. Question do you have a distance between you and Jesus mm -hmm. right now? I mean, I think that is telling in this story. Mm -hmm. What else do you see? So what stood out to me was seeing when Jesus asked, do you love me more than these? Yeah, I know right. a lot of times in the past, Peter has compared himself to the other disciples and say, you know, I'm, I'm the worst where I'll do anything for you. And so I think with Jesus calling Peter's name out. I know mm -hmm. who you are. I'm calling you. Even if there's a distance, I'm calling you back to me. And seeing where we stand. Yeah. Seeing where we stand um, in that even the redemption of asking him three times, three times. as he denied him three, three times. times. And so good. it's like, do you still love me more than these? The word love here we see, and this is why we tell y'all to get a concordance and break down these words. So I looked at the word love that Jesus used and the word love that Peter used, and they were different. Mm -hmm. So Jesus used this word called agapayo. Mm -hmm. He says, do you love me, agapayo? And agapayo means to give. Like, do you, are you willing to give your life to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Like me, and that's what Jesus said. Are you willing to give your life to me, agapayo? And Peter said, yeah, I'm your friend. <laughs> Like, I love, I love you like a brother. Like, like, <laughs> and he knows the word. Yeah. Like he ain't he ain't dumb. Like he yeah. says, I love you like a brother. Mm -hmm. I love you like, you know, I love you like a friend. Like, what? And so he said that twice. So Jesus says, Agapayo, Agapayo, Phileo. Mm -hmm. And Peter said, Phileo, Phileo, Phileo. Mm -hmm. And so I think that Jesus was trying to tell Peter his future. Mm -hmm. Like, are you willing to die for me? Mm -hmm. And I guess that's at the end of the mm -hmm. scripture. Yeah, but later on in there. Tells them how he's gonna die. Yeah. But I think it's it's like a lot of times we can read the scripture and like, oh, I can't believe he didn't say like, yeah, I'll die for you. But like, are we really like literally if Jesus asked us, like, are you willing to die for me? Wow. Like for real. There's there's Christians overseas that are literally dying for Christ, but we have a hard time even living for him. Wow. And so it's like How can you, you die for him if you're not living for him? Yeah. Dang. 
And so we like to say, yeah, you know, I died for Christ, yeah. And that's how Peter was. But then when push came to shut up, when it was time to, oh, you know, you about to get killed too. He was like, nah, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And so it's like, we have to check ourselves. Like, do we, like, really, like, would we die for Christ? Yeah, more than these. Now, this is the one that got me. Now, when we look at when Jesus saying, do you love me more than these? This could be two things. Jesus can be talking about the other disciples. Mm -hmm. These disciples, do you love me more than these? Or think about where he is. Like if you watch the last videos, he's on a lake and he's trying to go back to a work that Jesus mm -hmm. called him out of. Mm -hmm. So maybe Jesus is saying, do you love me more than these? The, the work that you're doing, maybe the fish that you just caught, the career that you're in. Like, has God mm -hmm. spoken to you about that? Like, in our current situation, do you love me more than what we're doing now? Yeah. It's such a good question to reflect on. Um, and I think in the moment, it's like, what idols, mm -hmm. what things are you holding on to more than our obedience to Christ? Yeah. Like, say, if God called us to delete your YouTube, delete your TikTok. TikTok. Instagram. Are we willing to do that? Or do we love what we're familiar with or what seems to be successful if God is calling us somewhere else? Mm -hmm. and so I think I love that you brought that up um, because it's like, what are the things that we idolize mm -hmm. that we love more than Jesus? What about you? For me, like I said, I'm in this season in my life, it's like, I don't really care about stuff. And I guess he's stripping us, especially as we've been following this Jewish calendar, it's like you're going through open doors or you might be partnering with new people. So sometimes we have too much luggage, mm. too much stuff and too much good stuff. You too much treasure. Yeah, <laughs> good ministry, mm -hmm. but it's not God's yeah. ministry mm -hmm. for your life. And so I'm at a point now, it's like, man, just take it. I don't care because like, mm. I don't want to miss what God has for us because whatever he has for us is going to far exceed what we have mm -hmm. and what we can build our own. So yeah. that's where I'm at currently mm -hmm. in my, yeah. my journey, mm -hmm. our journey yeah. with him. I think it's so important to establish our love for God before we move into the ministry or whatever mm -hmm. the calling it is. Because sometimes we can have things that matter more to us than God, like right. who we're surrounded with. We care more about their opinions than Christ's opinions. Or we care more about money or things more than God. And so we're at a point, let's let's get this love thing squared away. Yeah. Like I'm letting you know what love I'm requiring from you. Wow before you move forward and it's a committed love it's and, that's, a, and that's what you was talking about in your study if you don't love god talk about that yeah as we were reading on to the we'll get to that part the feeding the sheep and all that what that means but the prerequisite to feeding god's sheep and tending to his sheep and, and leading his sheep is love for god because if we don't love God right, we won't love his sheep right. We can't feed no sheep right. And we'll yeah. misuse them and, and hurt them and treat them wrong. We'll just be hirelings. We, yeah. we love money more than we love you, so I'm a hireling. So yeah, I'll, I'll watch him. But when push comes to sub, when it's time to, when things heat up or it's no longer serving me, I'm out. I'm out. And who cares about the life of the sheep? And so yeah. God is wanting people who's in the ministry and who's taking care of his followers to love God because we don't don't love him right we're not going to love who we take care of That's who we're good. leading one of the things I saw was feed my sheep and, and God when I was studying this several years ago he brought this to my my recollection he says Damon I want you to look at the sheep and then I want you to look at the lambs mm -hmm. I said there must be some kind of difference mm -hmm. between a lamb and a sheep. And I saw that the lamb was the first year mm -hmm. of the sheep. And I was like, oh <laughs> my goodness. So there is a maturity level of I'm eating milk. Like we have a child now mm -hmm. he's eating milk, but he's transitioning to solid foods. Mm -hmm. And this is what Jesus, he wanted to break it down so simple that there's a maturity level to a Christian. Mm -hmm. If you are sh a shepherd and you have lambs, they need different food mm -hmm. than sheep. Yeah. And so for lambs, it is the first year. So I saw there that it is 
important to walk with lambs for a year mm -hmm. as discipling them, mm -hmm. like That's so good. close to them, feeding them milk, mm -hmm. not really meat because mm -hmm. they can't handle it. Mm -hmm. And I think with, when you think about the, the lamb and the sheep or even a baby and um, a adult, lambs and babies are going to eat whatever you feed them. Yeah. Like they don't know, oh, this is bad. This is poisonous to me. I shouldn't eat this, which we, we know if we spiritually the new christians the the baby lambs who just came into the fold they don't know the difference between false talk, doctrine and, and the word of god and so there's a lot of false teachers out there mm -hmm. that are feeding the lambs the wrong type of food yeah. they're not feeding the true word of god the adulterate the unadulterated word of god but they don't know any better because they're they're baby christians they're baby lambs and that's that's where it comes when when I was saying this when I felt God's remind me when you go to a zoo or a park you see the sign do, do not, not feed, feed the, the animals or the the animals whatever yeah. it is and I felt God say if you don't love me and you don't love my people don't feed my sheep wow don't feed my sheep and so we we looked into so why I'm like okay so why do those signs are those signs there and says don't feed the animals because you can give them the wrong type of food which can make them sick it can spread disease also um it can change their appetite wow. so they'll no longer want what they need and then also it makes them dependent on you and so if we bring that back to the word of god and, and teachers you know, you'll give them the wrong word. So now they're, they're things that itch in their ears, feed mm -hmm. their flesh as opposed to feeding their spirit that are dependent on you. So they're no longer going to God or the word of God to feed themselves. Now they need a word from you, mm -hmm. which is false. You're spreading disease, false teaching. So it's spreading in the church now. And now we have a whole bunch of believers believing a false doctrine, all because the hireling fed the sheep they did not love god they did not love them and they were not giving them the proper food and so the people that are usually in the park know what they need mm -hmm. since they don't feed them we know what they need we provided a place for them to eat and so god has true teachers that know what the sheep need that are, love them that love god and they're committed to their maturity i see here that jesus is the best dietitian <laughs> right like he understands our nutrition so it seems like why we shouldn't feed sheep and lamb <laughs> the wrong foods is because number one they get disease number two is deficit like they can be malnourished mm. they don't have the right nutrition to grow uh, they can be dependent. Other thing, they can be deceived. Mm -hmm. Like we're deceived and we're following false doctrine. Mm -hmm. You can die and be destroyed if you eat the wrong things. I really want y'all to write that down. Like we shouldn't feed the sheep the wrong things mm -hmm. as shepherd, as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think when it goes back to James 3, 1, I believe, when it says not many should desire to be teachers mm -hmm. because you're going to be held accountable, strict, uh, more strict than those. And so we're not, it, it says it's a high calling for that. But I think too many people are desiring to be teachers on social media, on YouTube. Let me get this word. And it's false and there. It's not motivated by love for God and love for people, but more so about fame, mm -hmm. getting the likes, attention on me, the money. And so if we don't love God, if we love money more than God, if we love fame more than God, we should not feed his sheep as in that discipling and all that. Um, and so that's, that makes us analyze like, what, what are, is our motivation? Do we that's, love God? So 18 through 25, we're not gonna do a study on 18 through 25 versus 18 to 25, but we can give you a recap. Jesus is basically telling Peter, stay in your lane, <laughs> because he was giving him a prerequisite of what, what it is to feed lambs and sheep and tend to them. But then he was like, I'm giving you a picture of how are you going to pass away mm. that you're going to have to die for me? You have to give up your life for me. And don't look at John. <laughs> don't look at the other disciples. Hold on. Is John going to live? Like, no, 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 no. This is how you're going to serve me in this lifetime. And this is how you're going to serve me in your death. Mm. And so we all have a part to play. Mm -hmm. Like teachers isn't the only thing. Being a pastor isn't the only thing. But the main thing is, do you love God? 
and are you willing to die for him or do whatever he's called you to do? Stay in your lane. <laughs> Stay in your lane. So that's, that's good. So good. That's good. Now, again, if you did not watch the last three, you want to watch it. We have some good stuff, some mm -hmm. good questions for you to ask yourself, your small group, your church. You can, again, take these these lessons. But this is the last one from this John 21. John 21 Bible study. I'm going to put it in a playlist so you can watch it. Mm -hmm. And I'll put it at the end of the video. Yeah. Again, my name is Damian Nash. And I'm Kennedy Nash. And read your Bibles, read study your Bibles. Bibles. And thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.